Well, Mike, what the heck are we doing here? I'm about to give you control of my show. You're you're going to interview me on my own show? You know what, Dom? It, it, it's crazy, but this, this might just work. Yeah. So let me just ask your audience something real quickly. Yeah. Guys, if you get a lead that's just all about price and you think, nah, that's not a good fit. Well, hold on a minute. In today's episode, we're going to be chatting with the one, the only Dominic Rubino, the kitchen renovation business coach, who's got a fresh perspective on this very topic. You know, Dom, he's going he's gonna to share his secret sauce with, with all of us today. He's going to show us what truly makes a hot lead. You know, and it's not just about the budget. It's about understanding their needs, the timing, the trust. Mm. You know, it, it's about that unique problem that you're going to solve for, you know, for your customer base that's going to allow you to take someone who's looking at price and turn them into a golden lead. And we're going to do all of that just after this, guys. So with that said, Don, um, can you share just a little bit about your background? I, I know okay. this is your show. Yeah. Does, does everyone really understand like, how special you are, who you are, and what you've done? To I wish guys? they knew how special I was. And by the way, this is so much more fun than me doing like one guy talking. Because usually it's just I do me talking. Um, <clears throat> but it's a great question. And today we're going to be talking about sales. And so some people may be going, well, what the heck does Rubino know about sales? And I would answer the same thing. I actually don't know much because I continually study it. I'm I'm a student of sales. I'm a student of business. I'm a student of personal improvement. Um, and there's some facts about me, some things about me people may not know, which I think, Mike, is how you and I got together on this is my background in business came through sales. Like I, I've met lots of people whose background in business came through being an accountant or being a lawyer or an engineer, right? Obviously, tons of people who listen to both my show and yours who came through the trades. I came through the trades, but I that's where I started. But then I went into sales. Sales led me to management for Sprint. Management at Sprint led me to trades um, management. And that led me back into construction. And it's, you know, I'm kind of a weird Frankenstein that way. Can I add one more thing? Oh, please do. <clears throat> okay. So for a long time, I had to, you know, they call it eat what you kill. I was a sales guy, professional sales guy, blue suit, white shirt, red tie, boardrooms, right? That was me for a very long time. It's, which is interesting. Cause like I said, I came from a trades background, but I, you know, that's, you know, after college, I thought that's what I needed to do. Go get a corporate job. Right. Anyways, I left that. Yeah, you got to make money. And sometimes it's hard to make money in sales. But what I eventually did is I became business partners with somebody who had been my mentor for years, a guy named Brian Tracy. Have you ever heard of Brian? You know, I haven't. Ah, yeah. He's a little, little bit of an aging brand. I'll give you that. <clears throat> but here's a couple of the books he's written. The Psychology of Selling. The Psychology of Achievement. Uh, Eat That Frog, which happens to be a really great book on time management right? When, if you need to eat a frog, eat a frog first thing in the morning and eat the ugly one first. I just summarized the whole book for you. Yeah. Uh, and it's anyways, chat GPT, but organically. Yeah. <laughs> There's no chat GPT and Brian. He's, you know, he's pushing, pushing late eighties now, but anyways, I, I learned the way everybody learns to sell by taking courses, by doing it wrong. And by understanding that sales is actually about helping people buy. It's not about something I do to somebody. It's something I help somebody else do. So anyways, that's a little bit about my background for maybe a different filter than we've ever talked about, you know, before. You know, it's, it's interesting that you, the way you, you say that, you know, you, you've learned sales by doing sales and, you know, you make mistakes and that's how you get better. And a friend of mine, I don't know, you, may, you may have heard of him. His name is Matt Plapp. Uh, Matt Plapp is going to be restaurant marketing guru. And he, he said something to me uh, a couple of weeks ago. He says, you know, when you got to you got to do something and, you, you know, you got to just get out there and forget, get it out of your head. He says, if you did, you know, if you're not embarrassed the first time you do something, you definitely went way too slow. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, uh, it's true. You know, I, there's a there's a saying. I think I got it from some Australian guys. Every master was once a disaster. <laughs> like that, right? It's, like you're just not going to be perfect the first time you do something. Oh, for sure, for sure. So, so let, let me let me ask this: Can just getting into sales and talking about it a little bit, can you share kind of a little bit of your unique perspective on why price shoppers really shouldn't be immediately dismissed as bad leads? Hmm. 
So why, it, it, <clears throat> that's a really common question, by the way, in business. Why, you know, somebody asked me about the price and I just want to hang up First, the phone. Yeah, they don't understand how good a tradesman I am. They don't understand the quality of the materials. They don't understand I have a stiletto framing hammer that cost me $300. Uh, none of us care, right? It, actually, the first thing is you just need to be curious with people. You know, sales, if you think about professional sales and professional sales scripting, you think, well, salespeople have a script. I could tell when I got timeshared the last time we went to Mazatlan, they followed this script, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's say there's a script to selling. I don't agree with over scripting selling, but let's say there's a script to it. What's the script on the buyer's side? They only have one. And you know the name of the customer that you're talking about. It's name, their name is Mr. and Mrs. How much is it? Have you ever heard of them, Mike? How much is it? How much is it? That's all they know how to ask you. How much is it? Right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, the only other thing they have against somebody who they think is really good at sales is to say, honey, you do the meeting and I won't be there. That way, no matter what happens, you know where I'm going with this, Mike, right? Well, at the end, I can say, this is great. I need to talk to my wife. Who, yeah. They only have two scripts. But that's yeah. they've, they've all learned that. So how do we overcome that? Well, we overcome that just with curiosity and caring. I know it sounds simple, but that's it. With those two things, I can sell software to the military. I can sell toothbrushes to churches. I just have to care and be curious. You know, it, it, it's interesting that you say that because I think one of, one of the big mistakes that a lot, a lot of my clients make, and for those people who don't know me, I, I run a digital marketing agency for kitchen remodeling contractors, home remodelers, cabinet owners, people like that, right? And, and I know one of the things that these guys do is they never ask this one question is, mm. is everybody going to be at the meeting who has, who needs to be involved in the decision? Oh my gosh, and Mike. Yeah. That's, and you hit the nail on the head right there. That's their, that's their defense. I mean, certainly, you know, how much does it cost is, is going to be the number one, because that's, that's how they're going to kind of put you off. But, oh, I can't really make the decision right now. I mean, you know, how many times have you, go, you know, would you ever go in and, and try and buy a house without your significant other? No, of no. course not. But the realtor wouldn't, you know, they're not just going to say, yeah, just come on in and, you know, we'll, we, we don't need the other person here. It doesn't work that way. It's one of the basic rules of sales. All decision makers must be present. Actually, so, you know, I talked about scripts earlier and I was making fun of timeshare people. There, there's, there's not necessarily scripts. There's certainly lines of logic and reasoning that work. But what's more important is that, important is that you have a process. Set, act to be really good at sales, which is, again, I'm going to reiterate this, to help people buy. Remember I said you have to be curious and you have to care. If I really want to help people, <clears throat> I have to show them how to buy remodeling or let's just say you do kitchen cabinets. It doesn't matter if you do roofing. I have to show them how to buy it because I sell, I provide kitchen remodeling all day long. They don't buy kitchen remodeling all day long. They might do it once every 25 years or they might do it once in their life. So they don't know how to do it. So who better to show them how to buy a new kitchen, how to buy a new patio package, how, how to buy anything than me? I do it all day long. No, for sure. So let, let's kind of keep keep on with the, you know, the kitchen remodeling side of this. <clears throat> and so let me, I mean, from a, from a kitchen remodeling business owner or a salesperson standpoint, what do you think is the number one mistake that remodelers make when dealing with kind of leads that are focused on price? Ego. I'm just, can I, can I cut you off? Oh the, yeah. No, the please. ego, uh, and I've done this too. It's the ego inside of me that says, so let's say you call and you say, Hey Dom, how much is it going to cost for a new kitchen? And I think to myself, mm -hmm. don't you know how good we are? I've got new machinery. I've got the best people. You should just call and beg me, beg me yeah. to do your kitchen. I'm so great, but my ego is getting in the way. I forgot to be curious and care. I know it sounds simple. That's I'm trying to keep it very simple, but it really boils down to that. It's now when somebody calls me, it's not an invitation. They're not going to buy my, my kitchen package. They're also not going to come watch my kid's soccer game. Like it's just a conversation. <laughs> I need to maybe have 10, 20 conversations to get one really good one. Then it's my job to help them solve their problem. And I do that through asking, asking great questions. 
Really? Asking, what, what is the... Just asking great questions. Yeah. No, I mean, I, th I think that it's key that like you've got to be inquisitive because you, they're not going to ask you questions. They, they, you know, you're right. It's well, what's the price? You know, well, you know, I, I talked to her. I talked to her. I got a guy. They always get a guy, right? I got, I got a, a guy, guy who's going to do, you know, who can remodel my kitchen for fifteen thousand dollars. You know, and my question is this: Well, listen, if you got a guy who can remodel your kitchen for fifteen thousand dollars, why are you and I having a conversation right now? Obviously, there was something that they didn't say to you. There's something missing in their delivery, yeah. and they'll. So you yeah. got to go and you got to dig down. You you've got to kind of do your due diligence and figure out what the heck is it that they want to hear. I can I add to that, Mike, because you you touch on something really good there. Uh, for everybody listening, I want you to write down this answer when somebody says, "How much is it going to cost?" Or when Mister and Mrs. How much is it gets on the phone? I want you to answer with, "I don't know." <laughs> and then that. follow that up really. So write, everybody write that down. How much is it? I don't know. And then wait for a second and say, actually, let me back up a sec. I do know. I just don't know enough about what you're trying to do. Can we back up? Can I, can I ask you some more questions? And they'll say, no, no, just tell me the price for a kitchen. I'm like, I, I can't. I want to, but I can't. It could be Three thousand dollars, but it could be three hundred. We just did a closet for three hundred thousand. You tell me where in the range you want to be for a kitchen, and I can build you one. If you say sixty-seven dollars, I'm just going to go to Toys R Us and get you a kids one and one of the plastic ones and install it, right? But what do you what do you think a kitchen's going to cost? I don't know, but what I do know is how to ask you some questions so we can figure it out together. There's the script, folks. Hit replay, hit rewind. That's the script. Again, was I curious there, Mike? You were, and I yeah. love the delivery. Is it you actually you, you come up very genuine, and that's that's something else. Is you don't want to be defensive. If someone says, oh, yeah. "How much? How much?" Then your your natural inclination, I think, as a human being, is is just to be super defensive at that. And and you, but Don, the way you just came off was was just so genuine, honest. and that's what people do. Yeah, just you be honest. Talk now, to people, and I used some tools. If you want to know the technical tools for this, I used bracketing. I used reverse yep. psychology. I used open-ended questions. I used silence. I didn't use silence very well, but I tried to. Those are all tools That's for sales. But really, what do they all come back to? Just be really curious. You know, one of the things that I like, let's say you walk down and, and somebody wants to do a kitchen rental, but it's a basement kitchen, right? Yep. And you walk in and you're like, this is avocado colored fridge and stove. It's really old. I can go and say, oh my God, I can see why you want to change this. You've got shag rug in the kitchen. You've got avocado appliances. It smells like mold. No wonder you want to change it. I can do that. Or I could walk down there. And again, this is where I remove ego and I'd be curious. I'll say, so you guys want to remodel this space? To which they'll say, yeah. Just curious, why? I mean, you have a working kitchen. And then one of them goes, you got to be kidding me. It smells like mold. These appliances are avocado. They don't even work. Oh, tell me more. Well, they don't work. It smells like mold. And my mother-in-law needs to move in in three months. I see. So we need to be ready for your mother-in-law. And you need updated. You see where I'm going with this, right? It's Just be the curious, seven man. Yeah. yeah. It's the what, Mike? You know, Let's say that again. It's seven whys. I don't right. you read that book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, of course. Ask you know, why. It, Be curious. Yeah. You know, one of the things I like to to say to people too is I mean, kind of you know, make a joke about it. You know, when they say something about, you know, they say say something about the fact that, oh my God, are you really asking me this? Like, do you have embarrassed kitchen syndrome? <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I mean, we we actually just created a whole video campaign for a client out in LA with that line, actually. Oh, that's actually um, a good one. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. So let me let me ask you to kind of just shift a little bit here because Dom, you said something to me in the past, and you you told mm -hmm. me in the past that you've got kind of like five key elements that you look for in a hot lead. Can can mm -hmm. you break that down a little bit? Because I know price is obviously part of it, but oh, yeah. what do you do to really determine is something a good lead? Because it's it's not just why is it a bad lead, but is it a hot lead? Is it a good lead? Yeah. Can I talk to? You? Yeah. And, and and so let's be clear, not all leads are going to be good leads. 
Yeah, for sure. Right. But that's your decision to make, but only after you ask enough questions. So it's uh, thank you for doing your research. There's five. I can run through them. Maybe I'll run through them really quick. So because if people are taking notes, I'll repeat myself, which is what we want. So here's the five things that my customer needs to know about me before they can buy. So you see how I just changed that? It's not five things I need to know about them. It's five things they need to know about me before they can make a purchase. Let's approach it from the customer's perspective because I'm here to help. I really am. I build the greatest kitchens in the city, if not the world. You know, some of you will agree or disagree because you build fine kitchens, but that's okay. And some of you build to the nth degree, right? That's okay. But here's the things that they need to know before they can make a purchasing decision. So here are the five things. They need to understand budget. You can say price. They need to understand their own need. Why do they need a new kitchen? By the way, this sounds like the dumbest question in the world, but we need to help them understand it. But that's okay. So they do, they need it. They don't want it. That's a big difference too. Yeah, you got you got to dig into that need, right? So yeah. we've got budget, we've got need, we've got timing. I love timing problems. Do you know why? Why is that? Because I'm really good as a remodeler, as a kitchen maker, at fixing timing problems. And everybody out there listening, it's you know time when you've got a prospect on the phone who has a time problem. They don't have a budget problem. Yeah. That's right. Great. Yeah. So we've got budget, we've got need, we've got timing. And then another one that people overlook is trust. So they need mm-hmm. to trust me. Would you prefer to trust somebody that was curious and cared? Or would you prefer to trust somebody who came in and was gruff and smoked and wore boots in your house and kind of talked yep. rough and... Yeah. You're asking to be led into someone's most valuable investment of their entire life. I mean, they they got to know, like, and trust you for sure. Yeah, yeah, and their kids are going to be there, and there's valuables in the house, and it's their and it's their home. It's their just like you said, it's their their safe zone, right? So we've got budget, need, timing, trust, and then there's always a technical question. There's going to be something technical, and I don't know what it is. Like, do you use low VOCs paint, or I don't want um a particle board from china whatever it is they've got a technical thing that's itching they need to scratch it but i have to find out what it is i don't know what it is that technical thing could be um it actually goes to trust too but that technical thing might be they've got cats yeah now you're like how the heck did that come into this conversation because if they have cats and it's not an outside cat but i mm-hmm. ask them the question so is your cat an outside cat? And they'll go, what does that have to do with our kitchen? Well, when we come to do the install or measurements, we need to make sure that cat doesn't bolt out the door because I'm going to feel really bad if that happens. So we should talk a little bit about the cat and how you want to make sure it's safe. Now, right? Like, Mike, I can see your face. I just hit on two things, trust and, and something technical. So what's interesting about budget, need, timing, trust, and technical is that sometimes one question or one thing that I do answers multiple of those. But if I miss any of those, I'm, they can't make the purchase. They simply cannot make the purchase. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And you know, I think at the end of the day, I mean, people, everyone's price focused at some point, but there, there's always something else behind it. Like I said, They've gotten a, you know, unless you're the first person they've talked to, and that's that's yeah. kind of the death of all sales. If you're number one, you never want to be the first person. But you know, as long as you're not the first person, there's something that they didn't hear, and you just yeah. bring it out and ask well, and them those questions. Do you, do you mind if I say this? I don't care if I'm first, second, third, last. Doesn't matter. I'm going in. I'm going hard. Now that's all inside Dommy's head. What you see is this <laughs> smiley, happy Dom. I know because I'm I'm low. I've got the tools. I've I've got a gun. The gun is loaded with budget, need, timing, trust, technical. So you put me in first, put me in third. I don't care. I'm going to win that deal. If that's a winnable deal, I'm going to win it. I want everybody to remember that if they're going to buy a kitchen package and you, they said, I think our budget's around twenty five grand. I'll just pick a kind of a neutral number. Some of you are doing kitchens for eighty grand. I get it. Some of you are doing kitchens for fifteen. Whatever. You're just picking twenty five, right? Okay. But they're going to do the kitchen reno and beat you up. But then they're going to go to the electronics store and buy a completely new stereo system or a gas fireplace or something like that. They've got the money. 
I just interviewed somebody on this show. Now he won't have gone live by the time this episode goes live, but he does entire kitchen packages for uh, guys. I'm doing air air quotes here. Cottages, 6,000 square foot cottages on very premium lakes in the Midwest. And he goes, it's easy for me to do upsells. He goes, I'm doing your kitchen. You want me to do your stairs? And so suddenly a, a $25,000 kitchen becomes a $50,000 job when you add the stairs. And then they want to do the trim package. And oh, by the way, can you do the mudroom? He goes, and they were beating me up for a $25,000 kitchen. He goes, I walk out of there with 75, 80,000 in work. The kitchen was only the first thing we started with. And he doesn't get his ego in a, in a, in a knot. Oh, that's, that's great. Well, let's, let's take us outside, like away from the kitchen area, because Dom, you, you've done so much in your career, right? You've been in all different kinds of industries. Can you share you know, maybe a real life example of where you turned someone who was price focused or a price focused lead really into a successful deal? And really, what was the turning point of that, where mm -hmm. they went from caring about price to answering your questions and, and kind of figuring out where to go? Yeah. So it's it's interesting that you asked that because that example that I talked about with walking into a moldy basement, that, yeah. that I, I just, it sticks in my mind, right? And what I have to do is I have to find out why they want this done. So I'm going to take it away from me and I'm going to use a close. Like this is a closing technique. So for people who've done any sales training at all, they've heard that there's closing techniques and they feel like these secret things, these really clever wordplay. It's not. It's just a line of logic and reasoning. I wonder if anybody here has ever heard of a women's health outlet called Jenny Craig. Hmm. Jenny Craig is a, like women go there. I think it's typically women that go there, maybe men too, but you go on a meal plan and you need to, you know, cause you want to yeah. lose weight. Right? Um, <clears throat> so there's a tactic, it's called the Jenny Craig close. It's the, it, so it's a line of logic and reasoning that they use at Jenny Craig when somebody walks in off the street and says, yeah, I, I'm looking at a, uh, a meal package, right? Well, there's a thousand of those. If you, you know, and you go down the main street of your town, there's a gym, there's a yoga studio, there's a Pilates studio, there's a soul cycle. There's a, it's, there's a thousand competitors out there. So how does Jenny Craig get to the point where she has a stadium named after her, right? How do you get there? Well, you get there by being professional in what you do. So here's the Jenny Craig close. It's very simple. Mike, I'm going to say it to you, right? So <clears throat> Mike, can we just back up for a second? I need to understand this. You know, my company's been around remodeling kitchens for, I don't know, 13 years. So we've never spoken before. What happened in your life in the last 24 hours before you called me to finally make you decide to pick up the phone? I, nobody can see this on the podcast, but I'm giving Mike the, the zipper mouth silence, right? You have to follow that with silence. Do not talk. Stop talking. And then I let Mike respond with, Mike, just give me your answer. What happened in your life in the last 24 hours before you decided to give us a call? You know, my mother-in-law came and she was just on my ass. I'm, I'm sorry, you <laughs> yeah, on my butt. Yeah, she was on me. Yeah. yeah. But and, and that's an example, right? So, but here's what happens at Jenny Craig. And they know this very well. And they have to ask this question at a very specific time in the sales process. But what they hear from the woman who's sitting across the table is something emotional. They train their representatives that the woman's probably going to cry. Now they've removed all price objections because what they hear is, my kid said I'm fat. My high school reunion's coming up. Jenny's going to be there. I've always hated Jenny. And I saw her on Facebook and oh my God, she looks fantastic and I don't. My husband's having an affair. All of these things come out at the Jenny Craig desk. It's called the Jenny Craig close because it's meant to find the emotion. Yeah, and that emotion, I think it's so important too with follow-up. One, one of the things that, you know, you also got to remember is someone starts talking to you and you're doing your sales presentation, you know, and if you don't close them on the spot, and we're talking about sometimes six-figure deals here, you don't yeah. close on the spot time people lose that emotion so the other i think the other thing is oh. what do you do to keep that emotion going what do you do so that a week and a half down the road when you when you follow up that they re re retain that kind of emotional attachment to i really do need to remodel this kitchen oh my god mike you just hit on such a big one so there's i got to go in a couple directions here right 
So folks, please write this down. If you're taking any notes at all today, just write these down. So somehow it opens a little box in your mind and you stuff this little note in there. Think of a fortune cookie note. You're just sliding it in there. You're going to close that door, but one day it'll come back to you. Okay. Please remember this time kills deals. Now that's a negative, but I can use it as a positive. And here's how we do that. I don't want to do a one call close. So I don't want to do a one appointment close. That is a death sentence. It's a death sentence. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to work, folks. Stop it. Now, you might be going, but it's a waste of my time. It's not a waste of your time. It's a waste of your time going to bad appointments with tire kickers. But if you've got a well-qualified lead, they're not a customer yet. They're just a lead. They're just very interested in your business. A well-qualified lead, under, uh, we both understand. They understand their own budget. I know their budget. They understand their need. I know their need. I understand their timing. They know their timing. I understand how and why they trust me. They know how and why they trust me. Maybe it was a referral. Maybe they saw some website. Maybe they mentioned my Yelp reviews, whatever, right? And then I figured out what the technical thing is. I don't know what the technical thing is. Do you have to ask, right? They might really hate the sound or the smell of sawdust. Maybe that's their technical thing, right? They might be worried about inspectors. I don't, I don't know. That's your job. You got to figure it out, right? But I can use that and, and manufacture the sales process so that I use time to my advantage and that I keep the momentum going. And Mike, you brought up an excellent point earlier. All decision makers are present because you could fool me once, but you can't fool me twice or I'm not coming back. So right. somebody phones. So Mike, you're an expert at generating online leads for kitchen remodeling, right? So you know that that's a Mike thing. You make mm -hmm. the phone ring at my shop. I pick up the phone. That's not the sales call. That's the qualifying call. That's the pre-qualifying call. That's You're right. Yeah, that's the pre-qualifying. Yeah. So I'm just going to say, hey, Mr. Goldstein, if you've got two minutes, can I ask you a couple of questions? I actually can't talk much longer than that. I have other people coming into the showroom. Yeah. Can I ask you a couple of questions? And so now the power is shifted. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Guess what my questions are going to be based on? If you can't see me on the podcast, but budget, need, <laughs> timing, trust, relation, uh, but budget, need, timing, trust. And then the technical thing, like th that's it. And then I'm going to say, hey, listen, let's set up a proper phone call where you, and, uh, sorry, Mike, are you married? Is Who else lives in the home? Absolutely. My wife, my wife is in the home and I oh. think we definitely need to put her on okay. the call too because she makes yeah. the decision. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's great that you say that up front. You've clearly been married for a while. Um, what I might say is, look, it's really important for me to understand your design intent, what you yeah. want to accomplish. So before I come out, there's no use to be just coming out there and wandering through your house. That's not going to help anything. I want to understand a few things because I might need to do some research. Maybe I've got to arrange some samples. I want to know how you use your space. I want to know how there's a, I got a ton of questions, but I can't get to it today. When can I set an appointment with you, your wife and myself to do a zoom call, a conference call. Now I want that appointment within three days of today because time mm -hmm. does what? It kills all deals. Time kills deals. So now we go, now we have that appointment and Mike and his wife and me are on the call and I go through, guess what? Again, budget, need, timing, trust, technical. And I make sure the decision makers are there. And let me just start here just real quick from the technical standpoint of when you're setting up that appointment, that zoom call, something that guys, you got to make sure you do talk to you, talk to whoever does all your automation. Just like when you go to the doctors, when you go to the dentist, make sure they're getting an email and a text reminder mm. the day or hey, just confirming this is still a good time for appointment. Yes, yes. When they say yes, then you're then they're gonna get a special follow-up. Hey, before our meeting, by the way, I thought you might like to see our planning guide. Something like that. Just yeah. so you wanna you wanna make you wanna get that it's, it's all about the emotion, yeah. right? And that, and that's one of our clients is we make sure that if, you know when they, they're planning they're going to spend an hour with somebody but trust me they've spent an hour or two hours prepping for that one hour so you want to give them everything mm -hmm. they, they've looked at your website they've looked at your brochure they've yeah. gone they've read your reviews they're going to they're going to want to pick you apart because yeah pricing is their first offense but they're going to have a few others because they you know what they want the best deal yeah you know think about opposite world so somebody who doesn't listen to my podcast or yours, right? So yeah. a cabinet maker, a home kitchen renovator, who's not listening to this show, he just shows up. He says, you know, somebody phones him. He's like, yeah, I'll come by. I'll have a look. It's on my way home. It's easy. 
he comes in, he looks around, he's like, yeah, we can do it. Uh, it's this much per square foot. Uh, you got this many square feet. I'm going to bump it up a little bit in my head. Da, da, da. He writes something on the back of a business card or on a piece of paper and he hands it to them. And he says, uh, I don't know, somewhere around 27 grand. That's their whole experience. That guy now leaves and says, yeah, I just did an estimate here. I'm a great, I just figured, just give him a price per square, price per linear foot, sorry, not square foot. Um, and then they meet Mike and Mike has this process He's busy. The first time I call him, he has another appointment. He said, he asked me a couple of quick questions. Then he set another appointment for me and my wife. That appointment followed a very nice process. And then he, he asked to be invited to the home. And so guess what happens? Go to the opposite world where the other guy who said he was just going to drop in before he shows up, the husband says to the wife, I got to go walk the dog. She's like, yeah, go ahead. It's just the cabinet guy who's coming by. Now, when Mike's about to show up, and my and and the the homeowner says I'm gonna go walk the dog. The wife's gonna go. No 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 no. Mike's coming. We're talking about the kitchen. Put the dog in the backyard. Tie him to the tree. <laughs> I don't know what you got to do, but we got to talk to Mike. It's a totally different experience, and it's not costing anybody any money. Other than putting a simple process. I love simple systems, Mike. You got to have simple systems. It's it's just having that process and, and the system in place. Yeah. Um, and, you know. And then, you know, your job is just to explain, you know, the value behind what, what you're doing. And so let, let me ask you, just go into that. What would be your advice for a remodeler who struggles to explain the value behind the pricing to a potential client? Mm. Yeah, you got to sell the process. The fact that you're a project management expert, the fact that you're here to solve the problem of a moldy kitchen with a mother-in-law timeline with a, a budget issue. I can work with your budget, no problem. We just have to really clearly understand what your budget is and what it's being driven by, right? So uh, a remodeler that's struggling to understand that, uh, which is a totally fair question. Folks, if you're listening, you, you just need a little bit more training or insight. So spend some time, you know, listen to more podcasts like this, buy some books, reach out to either Mike or I, we'll walk you through it. I mean, you and I both have skills in this, but don't, don't assume that that's the way life has to be forever and ever, amen, it doesn't. It doesn't. Other guys have figured this out. That's why in the same city as you, there's another cabinet maker or remodeler who's doing 10, 12, maybe $20 million a year in the same city as you, same market. They're buying from the same wholesaler, the same hardwood supplier. And you're, you're still stuck, feeling stuck at 700 grand. I'm not knocking you. You're amazing for getting to 700 grand, but you can't go into work every day saying, I'm a $700,000 business. It's just how we do things. Change. I mean, I, I think, you know, Dom, you hit, you hit on something before it's fine. The, you know, it's fine. The problem because the price is not going to be the real issue. It, it never is. So with that in mind, like, how do you identify the one unique problem? How, how do you solve, you know, for a lead that, you know, that need, need to explain to you why they need to, to have this done what is you know and, and again it's why do they need not what do they want because if you want something you can delay it. if you need it you know and, and it, yeah. it not not I, I, a little bit, but like talking about like damage restoration versus kitchen remodeling because i hate the aesthetics like sure. you know need versus want yeah and unfortunately we, we all can't go into a house that was just wiped out by a flood or something like that and and, and fix it up and honestly that that's a whole different system that, that's a different person right? yeah that's yeah that can be driven by that's another thing that's another thing right. if you're in that market but, but, that's that's a, but my, I, is that how do you identify what is that one unique problem that they that they need you to solve for them? Yeah. So I'm going to sound a bit like a broken record, but I'm going to add something to the broken record. Okay. So the first thing is I have to be in control of asking the questions around the themes of Mike, say it with me, budget, need, timing, trust, and something technical, technical. right? Okay. That all sounds very interesting, but you asked, how can I identify the most important thing? Here's what it is, and you might be surprised. Watch for when you ask a question and it gets answered emotionally. That's emotions cool. drive, there's, there's two ways that we make decisions. There's logic and there's emotion. Logic is when you go to Walmart to buy your kids back to school supplies and they say, well, these pens are $8 and these ones are $2. And you go, well, they're going to lose them anyway. I'm going to buy the $2 pack. It, it's just done, right? That's a logical decision, right? Uh, especially in my house, because they just, I don't know what my kids do with pens. They just, 
but we don't do that with granite versus quartz. You know, <laughs> yeah. Now, now it's but watch yeah. for the emotion. So let's use granite versus quartzite. So um, you guys are doing, the, let me do a little bit of a role play with you, Mike, and we're going to use granite versus quartzite. I'm going to do the role play, but I'm also going to play the part of the homeowner, right? So, uh, okay, guys, we've done a great job. I think I've got your vision on the cabinet package. What we haven't talked about much is the countertops. So I think you mentioned one of your friends had quartzite and you want granite to... I mean, I'm fine to do either, either, but tell me why. Well, Shelly got quartzite. It's disgusting. Oh, we should, let's stop the role play there. She didn't say price. She didn't say color. She, well, she did say color. She just said it's disgusting. Yes. Disgusting, right? Or she put one pot on it and it burned or it chipped or I, I don't know, whatever. Okay, so she just answered a question that was pretty unemotional. Well, you want granite or quartzite? It's disgusting. Oh, why was it disgusting? Let her ramp it up. And once you think you've got them ramped up and in the drama zone of that quartzite, keep going. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, so let me ask you something. If I show you quartzite, what's going to happen? Dominic, you will be kicked out of the house. Okay, so no quartzite, no matter what the price. Uh... No, no matter what the price. Okay. And then the husband goes, show us one quartzite. Okay, I'll do that, but only on your permission, right? And of course, I'm going to show them some crappy quartzite option, right? Um, but they're going to tell you there was emotion in that. The same as the emotion of, well, it's moldy. All right, it's moldy. That's not really emotional. And my mother-in-law is moving in in three months. <gasps> oh, I caught that. Ugh. There you go. So Mike, you're, I think the key you're looking for it, along the theme of your question is ask questions, be curious and care, and then listen for emotion. Listen for somebody talking about family. Listen for somebody talking about their feelings. I know this sounds hokey, but I'll tell you what, that's where the money is. Find out their why. That's, that's fantastic. So with, with that in mind, let's take it a step further. What do you think are some actionable steps that you're, that the listeners here today can take to change the approach to, to ask them questions? What are, what are the things that you're, are, you're probably doing right now that you need, that you don't even realize you're doing, but you need to change? Uh, you mean to do better or to stop doing? Well, meaning that what, there, there's everybody right now when you have them do sales and, and I, I think for the most part most of the listeners of this show are you know successful enough that they they've done something right they've figured it out a little bit at least sure. not a lot yeah. you know and they're already asking some questions but what what are the actual steps that that they need to take to change their approach to price focus leads for example yeah I think the first one is it, it, along those lines change your attitude price is going to come up as a question but there's a yeah. bunch of other questions. If somebody just wants to talk price, if they just keep coming back to price, I'm probably not, I'm probably not the contractor for you, right? Just tell me the price. No, I, I can't. Like, I can't tell you. Okay, I'll tell you a price. I'll tell you two prices. The first price is $1. The second price is $100 million. And then I'll make a joke about it. Like, I don't know the price because I haven't even seen your house. Or I've right. seen the house, but there's so many unanswered questions. If you just want to buy a, a, a project based on price, what you should do is go get the IKEA catalog. It's got a builder in there and you can get IKEA quality furniture, which is you're going to have to try and make it last for 25, 30 years because you guys said you wanted to stay here. This is your forever home. But that'll answer the price question in like 20 minutes, 20, 21 minutes. It, it's interesting you say that because the, the other approach that I've I've taken with people, um, in, you know, and or I, I've trained my, my clients to do, is make it seem like you just don't want the job because the more you don't want to work for somebody, the more they want you to work for them. And I mean, I cannot tell you how many times someone has come back and said, you know, that was ingenious. You know, I said, you know, I said, listen, I just we typically don't handle jobs this small. I mean, really, yeah. our jobs they start at fifty thousand dollars and i mean i know you're in the twenty thousand dollar range i just i just don't think it's going to work well wait, 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 wait. maybe so tell me a little bit what what is involved in a fifty thousand dollar pro that is an approach that i think a lot of people mm. they're afraid to do they're afraid to turn down any paying job 
and you you don't want to take on just any job just because some, you know somebody has you there but if you if you create the perception that you don't need the job oftentimes it's an easier sell and easier close for you yeah yeah you can certainly do that one of my favorite tools is the calendar yeah the calendar is my boss i'll have a pre-filled calendar that shows a bunch of jobs in progress. And when somebody says, oh, you know what? We really want to beat you up on price. Say, I, look, my calendar's full anyways up until choose a month, December. So yeah. we wouldn't be able to take on a job like yours anyways till December. And 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 the with the kind of questions you're asking me, I don't think this is the kind of job I would make room on the calendar for anyway. Yeah, you can tell them that. Like they've offended you by saying you're too expensive. So you're, you're free to say, look, I just don't think we'd take a job like this right? It, it has to work both ways. And, but again, it's yeah. always professional and I have to come from a place of curiosity, a lot of curiosity and caring. I want to make the decision about whether we follow up with this deal or not, not them. I think that, I think that make, that makes a lot of sense. And again, Don, I just want to go back to something I said to you earlier is mm -hmm. you come off so genuine though, the way you're talking, you come off, like you actually care about what people have to say, whether you do or don't. And I, 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 think do. You actually do. I do, I do. <laughs> well, it, not to be theatrical, but I mean, part of it is people want to do business with those that they think actually care about the end process. I, and as you're asking questions, be, be authentic, be real, and actually take an interest in what someone has to say. Don't just go in with a checklist. Yeah. You know what, it, Mike, it, you just reminded me of something. This was years ago. I was selling in a, like a pretty wealthy part of town pretty wealthy. And I was so busy. And I, I went and did a quote for a guy and I just kind of barked at him. This is how much it's going to cost. Nah, nah, you got to do this. You got to move that. Rah, rah, rah. And I'm like, I, I can get started then. And he's like, yeah, I'll get back to you. And I thought, I, I still remember that job. I blew it. I blew that. It was a good job. It was a really just, it was a, a job I could do all day long. And I blew it because I barked at the guy. I forgot that he doesn't like, I do this job every day, that trade I did every day. He didn't. And so to your point, just be curious, like they've never, whatever your trade is, they've not, never done kitchen model. They've never built a vanity. They've never uh, built a custom hobby rack. If, you know, cause some guys just do custom vanities and, and gun racks or whatever it is. Right. But they've never done this before. So at, just be curious with them. Yeah. Not only that, but I mean, you might find out as you're starting to ask questions that there's there are things that they don't even know exist that you can do for them. That all of a sudden, you know, yeah. those price shops who are stuck at fifteen thousand dollars. Well, geez, I you know I I live you know I I live up in the mountains in in Montana. I know I would really like to have a place to store all my guns when I go out hunting. Or I mean, a lot of they, people that they don't realize that's a thing. Yeah, you know, you know place. You know who does a really good job of that is the people that listen to this show that are in the closet industry. Because they ask for a tour of the whole home, not just the kitchen. And the reason they want a tour of the whole home is so you see how people live. But when you do that tour of the whole home and you realize they collect guns or NFL helmets, or I can't imagine a home with 200 bobbleheads in it. That must be kind of spooky. But let's say they collect bobbleheads or it doesn't matter. But that's a great thing to talk about. Like, oh, you collect NFL helmets? Yeah, they're everywhere. Oh, you know, we can, we can build you a display case for that. What? I mean, if you want, I, I'm happy to do it. I mean, you've got some really nice helmets here or shoot, like whatever they've got. It's so easy. You've now changed from price to emotion because they love their bobbleheads. They love their, I don't know, Santa Claus figurines. What's, what's the creepiest thing anybody's ever seen in a home? <laughs> I don't know. I've seen a few of them here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's some crazy stuff. But it, it's a great point, Mike. Go for a tour. The closet industry really has that one dialed in. They really do. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And everyone, everyone collects something that you, you know, they they want, they're very proud of there, or they do something in their home that you know is so unique to them and they they want to tell everybody about it. They've got a hobby that you know, you talk to people about things that interest them. You know, some someone comes into my house and you know they, they want to talk about their Barbie doll collection. Well, you know what? I really don't care about that. But if they come, but they come into my house and you know they look and they see you know hey I, you got a couple of Boston Celtics autographed posters from the eighties and oh tell me about it. how'd you get that? all the I'll talk to them all day long about something like that right yeah yeah it's it, it's, it's great advice you know one of the easiest upsells this this it has to be a dog family for this to work 
you know, dog fur babies, right? People that love their dogs, love their dogs. But if, if you're doing oh, yeah. a kitchen for a family with a dog or dogs, the easiest upsell is a custom dog box that matches the fit, the fit and finish. Yes. It's yeah. incredibly easy. And you can do that for 800 bucks, but your, your ancillary costs, you're already doing the job. You're going to build that. It's 150 in materials. You can sell it for eight, 900 bucks without even trying. And it's for their dog. Yeah. It's going to match the kitchen. And guess who they're going to tell when their friends come over for a glass of wine, they'll say, Dominic did our kitchen. It's fantastic, but I got to show you this. So clever. That's the dog box. We're like, oh my God, we got to call him. Yes, you do. You do need to call him. That's, it's it's funny you say it. One, one of my favorite clients I ever worked with was an organic um, landscape company. And their whole thing was, you know, do you feel safe having your dog walk outside in the backyard? You know, and that, that's oh, wow. old hundreds of thousands of dollars of <clears throat> landscaping that one season for them i just remember and your people they are fanatics about their pets yeah um and I'm, you know, listen i just came back from disney world last weekend <laughs> my wife had a couple of these ridiculous things that the dog is in now <laughs> so I, I i hear you um but you know that that aside Dominic, let me ask this what's the one thing that you want your listeners to take away from this conversation that could really transform the way that they are handling you know the the lead process today moving forward oh it's it's hard to say one thing because hopefully we've covered a so bunch much, a bunch it... of small things but I, yeah i i would say write down like and people have heard me say this on the show before leave the office turn off your phone go to a coffee shop with a blank piece of paper and write down the customer journey like just write down the steps for somebody buying from you now just on a piece of paper top to bottom and then look at it and think if i could make one change that would help move the sales process along, what would it be? And we've talked about a bunch of them, right? First, you know, I hope people aren't doing this, but it's not a one call close. It should be multiple steps where I don't want to give, I'm happy to give a half hour of my time on the phone. I'm happy to do a design consultation package for $500. We don't do free estimates. The free estimate is the phone call, right? I, but put in those things that are important to you and just start to look at that as a process, as a simple system. That might be the first place if I generically said how to start it. And then on top of that, when you're actually talking to people, be curious. And you could be curious using those five questions and then care. I can't script caring for you, but care, right? And if I can just kind of jump in here to, you know, to, to your point about asking questions, the one thing that you that you have said that really resonated with me, because I know I use it in my sales process, um, and, and I think any, any good salesperson does, is really tie into the emotion yeah. what is what is it that you know you've got to find out what's driving their their need and again and, and i keep saying need versus want because wants can be delayed needs can't but you, you know if you can find out what the need is you're going to make a sale yeah can i can i add to that because there's some people listening yeah. to this out of curiosity but in the back of their head they're going that's a pretty good show but i only sell to contractors so i kind of don't care but it's been entertaining and Mike and Dom are pretty good at kibbutzing back and forth. You're wrong. You're, we are good at kibbutzing back and forth, but you're wrong. If you think that contractors don't have an emotional need and their emotion comes back to remember, I talked about budget need, timing, trust, and technical for sure. They have a timing issue. If their current guy provider can't provide quality projects on time, that's costing them. And it's costing them at the worst possible time because the cabinets go in towards the end of the project. They're trying to close. They're trying to sell it. They've already spent a bunch of money. They're trying to get it back. The bank is yapping at them. So there are opportunities to use those elements with your commercial contractors as well. So please don't discount anything we're talking about here as only working for Mr. and Mrs. How much is it? Oh, for sure. For sure. You know, not, not on that, but if you're going to be working with contracts, if you're in the B2B side of it, one of the things that a lot of people don't do is create a program. Create a program for the remodelers mm. and think about it from, from the standpoint is what is it that they want to see in your program? Now, what do you want to give in the program, but what do they want out of that? Because that can make all the difference in the world. They're already working with somebody. The reason they're talking to you is there's something missing, there's something they want that they're not getting. Yeah. And we come right back to be curious and care. What do they want? Care. Be curious. What's missing now? I, I would ask the guy, the builder. Uh, so you've been a builder for 15 years. Uh, you probably have a cabinet guy. Do you mind if I ask why we're having a coffee? 
what's he going to say? Oh, I just thought you'd buy me a coffee. No, he's going to say, well, you know what? The other guy's dropping the ball a little bit. He's great, but every once in a while, I need a back. Okay. You know, I mean, and I mean, I look at some of the things that I do, you know, Tom, I've met with so many people who they already have a Facebook ad guy. They already have someone who does their SEO and, but they want to talk to me. Why do they want to talk to me? Because they're not really happy. They think that there's something missing. Mm. Maybe it's just communication. Maybe they want someone who, you know, will pick up the phone on the weekend. Maybe, you know, they're, they're not getting the results. Maybe things have stagnated, whatever it might be, but there's something there. So find out what, what it is and, you know, why they want to talk to you. And if you are in residential, I mean, same here, it's the same thing. Why is the homeowner want to, they probably talked to somebody else. They probably done some research. They probably gone online. Yeah. There's something they're not reading. There's something they're not hearing and it's up to you. That's your job. Figure out what it is and talk to them about it. Yeah. Ask great questions and then shut up and listen. You know, there is a misconception about sales is that sales is all about talking, which I'm happy to let people have because I'm going to kill them every time. It's about listening. Yeah, and it's the hardest thing in the world for, for someone who in sales to do as well. I mean, I you know, especially people like us who have podcasts, people like us who, you know, we're, we're, we're good at kids. Rah, rah, and like rah, you rah. Said, yeah. You gotta shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Yeah, uh, count to 10. Count to 10 after every question you ask, just quietly to yourself, not like some psycho rocking themselves in the corner of the house. But uh, but yeah, just count to 10. Just be quiet. Yeah. No, for, for sure. Well, Don, this has been so much fun talking with you today. And I mean, yeah. I, I've learned here, and I'm, I'm sure your listeners have learned a ton as well. Uh, you know, everybody out there is, you know, they, some, they're struggling with the same things. Yeah. And I mean, you just really drop some just golden nuggets of, of information on everybody today. So you know, you. I want to thank you for tuning just to have this conversation. I want to thank you for interviewing me on my own podcast. I never thought that I would be a guest on my own show. Well, you know, sometimes you, know, you just got to go and you got to find the very best. And <laughs> they are. <laughs> oh, there you go. My ego, my ego. All right. <sighs> All right. Thanks, Mike. Why don't we wrap it up there? Absolutely. So, guys, I want to thank everybody for, for tuning in today to the podcast and, and for listening, you know, for Dominic Rubino, for Mike Goldstein. This has been so much fun. I've learned so much. I hope you have, too. I'm sure you guys are going to tune in and listen next, you know, next time as well.